Okay, so welcome back to another video. Here is a infinite sum we want to calculate. I didn't write the summation just yet, just because I want you to see where we're going through with this, because I think this is a cool one. So what we're dealing with is that we have one divided by one minus one divided by one plus four plus one divided by one plus four plus nine minus one divided by one plus four plus nine plus 16 plus all the way so on and so forth. So you can probably add notice as you can see with the denominators, with the summations of the um, numbers we're adding, they're actually in terms of, you know, the sums of the squares. So we can get that idea across out of the way of um, how our infinite sum we're dealing with. So after I, of course, you know, write out what the summation is um, that we're actually going to be working with. So beyond that, what we're doing is that, of course, it's a, it's an infinite sum. So, of course, there's going to be some ways to actually, you know, use some algebra and manipulation to actually rewrite, you know, our summation a little bit differently. And there's going to be some, um, of course, more um rewriting such the fact that we're actually going to be using a sort of getting creative in a sense of using the, a series um, expansion to, you know, rewrite the entire um well, not the entire, but like a part of the sum that we're doing, because we are actually going to do it in a way that we're actually split up into a sum of sums of um, what we're dealing with. So a lot going on with that. Um, of course, some um, interesting, you know, facts um, about um, some some facts we'll be using with the um, the series formulas, the, the notations of those sums that we'll be dealing with. So we'll just prepare for that. So with that, why don't we actually jump right in? So if you guess what the sum is dealing with, then congratulations, such that the summation we're actually working with is the infinite sum from n is equal to one to infinity of negative one to the power n plus one, and then divided by one square plus two square plus three square, all the way up to plus n square. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. So we can actually rewrite some things here, of course. If you notice the denominator, the sums of the squares actually has a nice close form of the following of n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six. And of course, since that being under the denominator, we can actually just flip the reciprocal of that to get our following. We have six multiplied by negative one and n to the power n plus one. And then as mentioned, n times n plus one and n times two n plus one. Okay. So with that, let's actually take our um, attention away from this entire sum. We'll just focus on just the denominator only. So if you actually just apply the partial fraction decomposition, so this part I'll leave up to you guys as an exercise to, you know, do the calculations and verification over here. We get that the following um, decomposition leads us to um, 1 divided by n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 subtract 4 divided by 2n plus 1, of course, utilizing the partial fractions decomposition. So with that being the case, then we can actually, of course, simplify this out a lot further that the following is, of course, written as this. So I'm actually just going to leave some room here and then right over here. So the infinite sum at n is equal to 1 to infinity of, so I'm actually just going to split this up and factor out the 6 to the power, or 6 times negative 1 to the power n plus 1. Then we have 1 divided by n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, and then subtract 4 divided by 2n plus 1. Okay, and then we just close that off. All right, so now we have some things that, of course, we can actually just factor or rather distribute the 6 to the power n plus 1 into everything over here. So why don't we actually apply that? So then now, of course, we're what we're dealing with in this case is a sum of sums, a sum of infinite sums. So first we have um, the infinite sum. So then we have 6 times negative 1 to the power n plus 1, then multiply by n. Add this with the infinite sum. Okay, n is equal to 1 of 6 to the negative 1, or 6 times negative 1 to the power n plus 1, and then divided by n plus 1. And then lastly, then a sub subtraction. So the infinite sum n is equal to 1 of, um, so that means 6, so that means n 4, so that means 24 multiplied by negative 1 to the power n plus 1, and then divided by 2n plus 1. Okay, so this being the case, we actually have some things that we need to, you know, calculate. We got three different sums we need to calculate. So, of course, with that, we're going to have to deal with things one at a time. So let's actually first deal with the, um, the simpler evaluations, which is um, the first sum over here. So first thing over here is that we can actually factor this sum out. So I have 6 multiplied by the infinite sum at n is equal to 1 of uh, negative 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n. 
Then what you'll notice is that this actually has a nice, um, um, nice close form so that, um, well, first, why don't I actually just write the expression out? So one and then minus one half, then add this with one over three. So, and then one minus one over four, et cetera, et cetera. This actually has a nice close form. And of course you can actually ch um, verify this for yourself. You can actually look this up to see how they get the evaluation of this. So I won't go into too, too much detail with that, but it will yield us with six times the natural log of two. The summation, of course, being that it yields a natural log of two. And then afterwards, you multiply the six. So that actually gives us that sum over here. So that's out of the way. So now let's deal with the second sum right here. So now um, to, to make things a little easier, I'll actually just factor out the six from outside. So next thing is, let me just write an asterisk over here. So next I have six, then the infinite sum at n is equal to one of negative one to the power n plus one and then divided by n plus one. Okay, so here's so here's what we're gonna do. So of course, we're gonna um, expand this out just for a sec. So I have six, and then now if you expand this series out over here, so then we're just gonna have one half, then subtract one over three, and then add this with one over four minus one over five, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, what we can do here is that I'm actually going to add and subtract a one in this case. So I have six, then we're going to, I'm going to put this in the beginning term. So it's going to be one subtract one, and then add this with one half, then subtract one three, and then one four four minus one over five, you know, the just that. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the cool thing. So I'll actually just distribute the six into just the first term and then the six into over here. And then, well, the negative one specifically, I factored that out. So in this case, I'll have six and then minus six multiplied by one. And then it's actually just factor out, take out the negative from that's the entire sum over here. So then one minus one half plus one over three and then minus one over four, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll notice that this is actually the same summation expansion that is the same thing over here. And we just showed that, well not really show, but I actually just stated, and then you can look at this up to yourself again, just to reiterate, is that this is actually just gonna equal the natural log of two. So basically this same thing over here is the result from over here. So this is gonna yield us with just six, subtract six times the natural log of two. Okay, so two sums down. Now we have the final one to deal with right over here. So let's actually get to that. All right, so our final sum we're gonna deal with right here. You might be thinking we'll probably just do something of a similar fashion. Not in this case. We're actually gonna actually use the series expansion specifically for the function, the arctangent of x. So to, um, to state that, so of course, by fact, the arctangent of x of its um, series representation, representation is written as x minus uh, one over three, one over three x cubed. Add this with one over five x to the five. Uh, subtract one over seven x to the seventh, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you write out that, that series expansion, we have that this is the infinite sum from n is equal to one of negative one to the power n plus one, and then times x to the power two n subtract one divided by two n subtract one. Okay, so now why don't we actually let x equals one? So let x equals one. So then that will just be the arc tan of one. Then we just plug the x back into here. So that means this is just gonna be infinite sum and it's equal to one of just, so one to the power of whatever is always gonna be one. So that means we're just left with negative one to the power um, n plus one, and then divided by two n minus one. And then of course, arc tan of one is then of course equal to just pi divided by four. Okay, so Let's get a little creative with this. Let's multiply the four to both sides. So that means we're just left with pi by itself. So then pi is then just equal to just four times our infinite sum and is equal to one of uh, negative one to the power n plus one divided by two n subtract one. And then the next thing I'll do is we'll actually change our index up. So we'll just start this at n is equal to zero. So then that's actually gonna have to change our um, numerator of the index. So that means four times the infinite sum n is equal to zero, this will be negative one to the power n plus two, and then divided by uh, two n subtract one. Well, actually, no, it will be a plus one in this case. So 
with that. And then you'll notice that n plus one for the negative one, n plus one, two, plus two with its parity, you can actually change that to saying that that's actually the same thing written as negative one to the power n, depending on, again, it's the parity of the odds and the evens when you actually expand this out, it can be written as the same thing as that. So four times the infinite sum at n is equal zero of negative one to the power n and then divided by two n plus one. Okay, so now to make things even more fun, let's multiply six to both sides. So six times pi and then set that equal to 24, then times the infinite sum at n is equal zero of negative one to the power n and then divided by two n plus one. Which of course, next thing is that I'll actually just expand this out for a bit. So that means that's just gonna be, if I put in zero, so that means that's gonna be one. And then we'll start back with the index for n is equal to one. So 24, and then, well, I'll also, also factor this out as well. So one, and then plus our infinite sum at n is equal one of negative one to the power n, and then divided by two n plus one. Okay, and so therefore, that's just gonna lead us with 24 times that and all that. Okay, so um, let me write that out. 24 and then add this with 24 times our infinite sum n is equal one of negative one to the power n and then divided by two n plus one. Then afterwards we can just subtract 24. So then the same thing back to over here. So therefore um, six pi minus 24 and then it equals, well, I'm at to draw the arrow back to over here. So this arrow back to here. So six pi minus 24 equals this. But hang on, I have a negative one to the power n two n plus one. You think we might be done, but just that's as simple as it gets. But you'll notice is that this is um, completely different. 24, um, negative one to the power n plus one, right? Well, if you look carefully, I have a minus over here. I can actually just put back that minus back into the base over here. So what that will do is that that's going to change this back to a negative one to the power n plus two. But then just earlier, we did something similar such that we can actually change it back to negative one to the power n depending on what the parity is of the odds and the even. So it's the same thing. So therefore, this same thing over here can be same thing written as negative one to the power n. So that changes that. And so this will yield us with the value of six pi minus 24. So then therefore this entire sum, so I'm just, call, I'm just gonna call this capital S, so then capital S is the entire sum we're given. So then I'm actually just plug back the value. So we have six um, times ln of two, then add this with from this sum over here, which is we evaluate six and then minus six ln of two, and then add this with six pi plus 24. And so you'll notice that we're gonna have some terms that of course cancel each other out, which of course being the six ln of twos over here. And then therefore six minus, um, or six plus six pi plus 24. So of course that's gonna be six pi plus 18. Then that'll just finally yield us if you wanna factor out the six if you want to. So that'll yield us with six pi subtract three, which of course that is our final answer to this infinite sum that it's a um, interesting one just like that. So we broke up, to, um, so basically to reiterate, we actually just, you know, first found, find out what the series expansion looks like. Then we just break it up with partial fraction decomposition, factor that out, split it into sums, find its own respective value. The first two being, you know, kind of a given. Well, the first one really, but then the second, you take that result from the first. And then the third one, we actually got a little creative with using the arctangent um, representation to yield us a value, put it all together and just yield us with this answer just like that. So there you have it. And yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.